Hello, everybody, and thank you uh, for tuning in to our final Outlook preview interview. Outlook is organized by Adana and is known as the world's premier non-woven's hygiene, personal care and wipes products conference. My name is Hayden Davis and I'm the editor here at Sustainable Non-Wovens and we are a media partner with Adana. We're working closely together to bring you a sneak preview of what you can expect at this year's event. And um, today I'm delighted to welcome Jane Wishneff. Jane is the executive director at the US-based Center for Baby and Adult Hygiene Product, known as the BAHP. Um, so thank you for joining us today, Jane. Um, thank you for having me. Pleasure. Um, perhaps you could start by just briefly outlining the issues you'll be addressing at this month's conference. Yeah, great. Happy to. Um, I'll mostly be focusing on the uh, consumer trends in the United States dealing with non-woven products and how that's affecting public policy that's being introduced and, and made in the United States. Um, most of my presentation is going to be focused on the issue of ingredient disclosure, um, mm -hmm. specifically with regards to menstrual products. We're seeing a lot of new legislation here in the United States, and there are new requirements are, that are going into effect this year. Sure. Okay. So um, the pandemic has inevitably altered consumer behavior, such as um, an increasing focus on home and personal hygiene. And um, what in your view, Jane, are the, are the key trends currently impacting the AHP sector in the US? Um, and how does this compare to the pre-COVID era? Yeah, I think when you look at the pandemic, there's big three big things that I've seen, you know, change um, with regards to, to our industry. Number one in every industry has seen this is that there's been a real um, focus from not only consumers, but also the federal government on um, supply chains and making sure that the supply chain is seamless. I think a lot of consumers, that was something that they um, did not appreciate prior pre-pandemic. And now it's something that they have become accustomed to um, that, that there are no difficulties or hiccups in the supply chain. So that, that I think is gonna be good for industry that there's gonna be a renewed focus on that issue um, from the federal government. The second thing is um, I think that there's some of those high priority issues that were really put on the back burner during the, the pandemic, especially with yeah. regards to single use plastics. I think there was, you know, there was obviously um, a need for some of those items um, that are single use plastics to be used on a more frequent basis given COVID. And, and now that as we post, I think post COVID, we're gonna see, and we're already beginning to see a new, new uh, sense of urgency to address that issue specifically. Um, and then I think the third thing is because consumers have been doing most of their shopping at home, um, transparency, which again, it, most of my presentation will be focused on the issue of transparency, but I think it's going to, it's may change the conversation that we're going to have, right? A lot of the requests from advocacy groups here in the United States have been pushing to have, um, ingredients labeled on the product so that consumers can see that information at the point of purchase. Well, now with, you know, the, the increase, even more shopping being done at home and online, um, I'm hoping that that conversation changes to more of a, how do we share this information with consumers in a digital fa fashion, which is for manufacturers is, is incredibly important. Um, they have limited real estate, um, and it's very timely and costly to update product labels, but much easier to do that online. And so I'm, I'm hoping that that maybe we can reshape that conversation post pandemic. Sure. And, and just looking at that, um, can you give a brief summary of the latest sort of legislative activity in North America addressing plastics in the environment? Um, yes. And what, sorry, what's the latest on the proposed labeling laws for absorbent hygiene products in the US? Yeah. So... Single use plastics is where we're seeing many, many states beginning to introduce uh, legislation or, or working on legislation um, to control the way, you know, plastics are disposed of in their states and their localities. I think we're going to, we are going to continue to see more and more of those proposals, especially on the, the local levels. I think yeah. that there's a lot of budgetary concerns now post pandemic, and there is, um, you can you can envision systems where manufacturers manufacturers are um, being required to pay for the disposal of products. So it not only addresses the the, the recycling concern, but it also is going to address you know these budgetary issues that some of the local governments are having. Um, 
recently, most recently, actually, two weeks ago, the federal government, um, there was a bill introduced. It's the um, Break Free from Plastic Pollution Act, and that's the federal government's uh, attempt to try to rein in um, plastic use to uh, ban certain products that are made of plastic um, and to try and change the federal recycling program. From BHP's perspective, we worked with the with the um, the two legislators who introduced this piece of legislation. We were able to talk to them and exempt and get out of scope diapers, adult incontinence products, and menstrual products. Um, the downside is that the plasticing packaging for all of those products are still it's still within scope. Um, so there's still a lot of work to do um, on this issue in in Washington D.C. But but we're engaging in those conversations. And, and again, to my first point, when we first began the interview, I think we're going to see this just, you know, really become more of an, a priority issue than it already was before um, COVID. With regard to labeling laws, um, there are two states in the United States that have already passed labeling laws requiring manufacturers to list ingredients in menstrual products on the package. That's New York and California. New York's uh, law comes to effect later this year, and California's is the beginning of 2023. Um, both are very different laws. Um, we worked very hard with the sponsor in California to what to develop what we think is a very balanced um, requirement and that it pr will provide consumers with consistent information um, done in a uniform way by by all of industry while also protecting confidential business information and keeping in mind that products packaging is quite small and you know there's limited uh, spaces to make to 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 include this information on the package um, but what we're really working on now and focused on is trying to get a federal requirement um, passed for ingredient disclosure for menstrual products. We obviously don't want to see 50 different state laws and requirements. And so we're, we're, we're working very proactively um, within Congress to try and get a federal standard for that. Okay. And, and how would you say the industry is responding to these sort of consumer and policy demands? So from BHP's perspective, I think we're taking it in a couple different ways, right? Number one, I just said it's proactive advocacy. I think it's really great to see our industry has come a long way in this issue and is is supportive of ingredient disclosure. We just want to ensure that it's done in the most, uh, the, the most, the way that makes the most sense for industry um, and that it's done in a way that all manufacturers understand and are complying in the same manner to provide that consistent information to consumers. So, so I think that proactive advocacy is really, really important right now. And, and we're, we're working hard on that. I think the second thing is consumer education. So we're going to, consumers are going to begin seeing new information on their product labels. And, and so I think it's, it's, um, on us as industry to help them understand what that information is and what that information means. Um, so in May, uh, BHP is actually publishing, we're launching on, on our website, a, a menstrual product ingredient glossary for consumers to basically identify all those ingredients that are used in menstrual products across all manufacturers, and then try to put in perspective, talk about the function and, and why those ingredients are in these products to help consumers understand understand to make these, you know, let's say chemical names less scary for consumers. Sure. Um, and so we're, we're, we're working on that very aggressively to help consumers understand what this new information is. Okay, that's great. It's really interesting. Um, so what would you say are the main challenges that the, the US AHP industry is going to face over the next three to five years? Um, and do you think these challenges also represent opportunities? Absolutely. I think we've talked about those, the two biggest challenges that we're just at the beginning of these conversations, I think, with regards to product disposal and transparency. And, and you're right, they are, they are opportunities for, for industry. From an association standpoint, obviously, um, the more proactive we are, the more in touch with consumers and policymakers that we are, we hopefully can get ahead of some of these conversations and um, work collaboratively with policymakers and advocacy groups who may, may come into the conversation at a different viewpoint than us. But from the manufacturer's side, um, yeah, again, if they can get ahead of it, if they can continue to innovate, to, to develop new ways to dispose of products, um, I think those are all really great opportunities for manufacturers, and we're going to continue to see some really great things being done by the companies in our industry. Great.
Well, thank you very much, Jane. I think that wraps it up for today. We don't want to give too much away, do we, before right. <laughs> or next week. Um, just to confirm everybody that um, Outlook will take place online from April 21st to the 23rd. You can go to adana.org for further details and you can book your place. Um, thanks again, Jane. And I look forward to seeing you again in a few days at Outlook. Great. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.